Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our integration series, so we're going to be learning about disk method for volumes of revolution. So let's go ahead and do this thing. Let's talk about a normal integral. So here, if we were to find the area between the x-axis and our curve, we know that we would integrate. So we would integrate in our bounds. We're starting at 0 and we're going all the way to 2. So this would be between 0 and 2 of our function, x squared dx. And there we would be able to solve for the area, right? So this single integral represents the area. But what if we were to revolve that single area all the way around the x-axis? So it's like it's standing up and we just rotate it all the way around. That is, yep, beautiful. So let's go ahead and talk about what this would look like. So here, if we revolved it around the x-axis, but if I just took a random slice, so let's say I take the circle right here, I would have a perfectly normal circle that's full of an area. And so if I took different slices, so say if I took a slice right here, I would have a smaller circle, right? If I took a slice right here, I would have a much larger circle. This is called the cross section of the volume. So this is a 3D region and I'm slicing it. I'm literally cutting it and I'm seeing what those slices would look like. So let's go ahead and talk about area first. So if I wanted to find the area of a circle, I would multiply pi times r squared, right? And let's go ahead and talk about what the radius is going to be. So if I work with a radius, a radius is going to look like that, which is going to be from this x-axis all the way up to our function, right? That's going to be our little radius right here. Same thing if I go between any of these circles, I'm going to be starting at the x-axis and moving up to the function. So here, the radius is going to be our function. So area is going to be pi times, and then our function is x squared, quantity squared. So here I can rewrite that as area equals pi times x to the power of 4. However, that only represents each of these circles. I want to find the entire volume of the entire shape. And so in order to get all those little tiny pieces, that's what the integral represents. The integral represents all of the tiny pieces between 0 and 2 of the areas of all of these circles added together. And so that's going to give us the entire shape. And so let's go ahead and rewrite this. Here we have pi on the outside, and we can take the antiderivative of x to the power of 4. So that becomes x to the power of 5 divided by 5. And we're doing this all the way between 0 and 2. So here we can go ahead and plug, I'll do down here, upper minus lower. And so this ends up being pi times 32 over 5. And you can rewrite that, you know, any way you like. And this represents the volume of that 3D sphere. So we took our 2D area and we took it and we circled it all the way around the x-axis. So that way it created a 3D shape. And we took the cross sections and we found, oh, the cross sections are circles. And I can add up the areas of all those circles. And that's why we use the integral. And so here we have a general formula about disk method around the x-axis. So f has to be a continuous function, right? And it has to be greater than or equal to 0 on a, b. If region r is bounded by the graph of f, the x-axis, and between the lines x equals a and x equals b, and we revolve it around the x-axis, the volume of the resulting solid of revolution is, and here we have exactly what we just did. We have pi times r squared, pi times r squared, but the radius is always going to be the height of the function, so we can replace it with f squared, and we're, you know, taking the derivative in terms of x. So this talks about the x-axis. It's not much different from the y-axis, so let's go ahead and do an example. I'll go ahead and graph it out. So here we're working between y is equal to 1, which is going to be the x-axis, all the way up to y is equal to 3. So just for the purpose of, you know, staying within my drawing, I'm going to say that's going to be 3. And so what we're doing is we're taking this area that's bounded between the y-axis and these bounds, and we're rotating that all the way around the y-axis. It's going to be a 3D shape of it going all the way around the y-axis. So instead, last time, what we did was we took cross-sections that crossed over the x-axis. We would do the same thing, but these would cross over the y-axis, so our circles would look something like that, right? And so again, we're going to be working with circles, but instead of the radius going up and down, it's going left and right. So the radius goes from the y-axis all the way out to our function, and our function is going to be y plus 1 quantity squared. So this doesn't change at all, because the area of this circle is going to be pi times the radius squared, so y plus 1 to the power of 4, right? Because squared to the power of 2 is 4. And so here, what we're doing is we're taking all of the circles 
between zero and three, right? Because that top number was three. And we are adding up all of their different areas. So y plus one to the power of four, and we're integrating in terms of y. So it doesn't change very much, except for the fact that we take different circles and we're revolving it around a different axis, right? And so here we can go ahead and take the antiderivative so that pi hangs out because it's a constant multiple. And we add one to the exponent, so y plus one to the power of five divided by five. And we're integrating this between zero and three. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm not going to simplify that much more because that's going to be, you know, fairly large number for the power of five. But that's the idea of what's going on. So the concept isn't much different if we're revolving around the x-axis versus the y-axis. So let's go ahead and do some more examples. We're going to find the volume, I should say volume, when revolved around the y-axis. So here we have y equals natural log of, log of x, and we're doing this between y equals 0 and y equals 3. So let's go ahead and graph out the natural log of x. It's going to look something like this. Nice. Okay, and then we're doing this between y is equal to 0, which is going to be the x-axis, and y is equal to 3. So like last time, we're integrating this kind of area, but let's actually draw out what it would look like. Just pretend you know that is perfectly symmetric. So what we would have is we would have a circle right here, and we would have a little circle right here. And this would be a 3D object. So it would go around, and then here would be the back, right? And so that represents one of our cross sections. So we can draw out our circle, and we have the radius is going to be from the y-axis all the way out to our corresponding function, right? And so it's going to be right here. So then our radius is going to be the natural log of x, right? But we're integrating this in terms of y. So I don't want the radius to be in terms of x. So let's go ahead and solve for y. We have y equals the natural log of x. We can raise both sides to the power of e in order to get that natural log to cancel out. And here we got what our radius is in terms of y. So this tells us that our radius is equal to e to the power of y. And I knew I was going to be in terms of y because we're actually revolving around the y-axis. So it must be in terms of y. So let's go ahead and set up our integral. We're going to have pi, you can have that on the inside or the outside, and it's going to be volume. And we're taking all of the circles between 0 and 3, so that's going to be our bounds. And then we have pi times the radius squared, so that's going to be e to the power of y squared dy. So when we have two exponents like that, what we can do is we can um, multiply them together, so that becomes e to the 2y. And now we can take the antiderivative. So we get e to the 2y divided by 2 between 0 and 3. And here we can plug in upper minus lower. And if you want, you can simplify that one more time. I suggest you do, especially on an exam. Not e to the 6. No one knows what that is. But 1 half, that's what it can become. And right there, we have the volume. Let's go ahead and try another one. We're going to do this one without graphing because it's disk method. So here we have our function. We have that whole thing. And we have our bounds. So we have y between 0, x to the negative 1 half, and the positive 1 half. And we're revolving this around the x-axis. So let's go ahead and set up our integral without even graphing it, because I believe in us. We have that the volume is equal to pi times our bounds. Our bounds are going to be from negative 1 half to positive 1 half, right? And we're going to take our radius, which is our function, which is already in terms of x, so 1 over the fourth root of 1 minus x squared, and we're going to square that. And so here we can see what's happening. We can go ahead and simplify this. That right there becomes the square root of 1 minus x squared. And this right here is going to be an inverse trig function. So we get pi times, and let's take the antiderivative. So that becomes um, inverse sine at x. And we're evaluating this between negative 1 half and positive 1 half. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Let's talk about what this means. So we'll take our first one right here. We have inverse sine of 1 half. So that means sine of sun theta is equal to 1 half. And this is how I remember it. So sine is opposite, so 1 over hypotenuse. That means the remaining leg has to be the square root of 3. So the bigger angle is across from the bigger side length. So this must be the 60 degrees, and this must be the 30 degrees. And so that tells me theta is equal to the smaller angle, a.k.a. pi over 6. So here we get pi times pi over 6. And now let's go ahead and talk about if it's negative 1 half. And so that tells me my bottom, my opposite leg, is going to be negative 1. Hypotenuse is going to be 2, and this must be the square root of 3. And so again, this has to be 60. This has to be 30. But now what we're doing is we're going down. So this occurs at negative pi over 6, right? And so we subtract negative pi over 6. And so here what we're left with is pi times, and that becomes 2 pi over 6. 
which is equal to pi squared divided by 3. And that right there is our solution. Let's go on and try one more. I already graphed this out for us. We have cosine of x, and we're revolving around the x-axis, and we're bounded between the x and y-axis. So what I like to do is I like to draw a little spinny thing around my axis, and then we're going to try to redraw it. You know, that was pretty good. So what we're doing is we're taking our little circle. So this right here would be our circle, right? And then this right here would be the opening of our circle. Since we're revolving around the x-axis, we're going to start at the x-axis and go all the way up to our function. So here the radius is going to be cosine of x. So let's go ahead and set up our integral. So we're going to be between, we have that the volume is equal to pi times. We're going to start at 0 and go all the way to pi over 2. And I can see that from our graph. And we're going to take um, cosine squared of x in terms of x. So in order to simplify this, we're going to have to use a trig identity, right? So here I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as pi times. And what I like to do is I like to bring out that scalar multiple, 1 half. So that's going to be become pi over 2, 0 to pi over 2. Huh. And then 1 plus cosine of 2x. I feel like that one's a bit simpler to try to um, integrate. So that pi over 2 is going to stay on the outside, and that becomes x plus sine of x, sorry, 2x, divided by 2, between 0 and pi over 2. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Okay, so this is nice. A lot of these go to 0. Sine of 0 is 0. 0 is 0. Sine of pi is 0. And so literally all we're left with is that pi over 2. And so that tells us our solution is pi squared divided by 4. And that's going to represent our volume. So that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist or link down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.